Welcome to the Fort Johnson podcast, where we bring you the latest updates, news, and stories from around our community. I'm your host, and today we're covering an extremely important topic, the ongoing efforts to help those affected by hurricanes Helene and Milton. As many of you know, these terrible storms have left many families displaced and communities in urgent need of immediate support. The Red Cross is mobilizing and calling for volunteers in our area to be part of this relief effort, whether experienced or just a willing pair of hands, there's, ex there's something for everyone. Stay tuned as we'll be discussing how you can join in and really make a difference for those in need. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching our podcast, I'm your host, Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and we are in the Fort Johnson Public Affairs podcast studio. And today with me, we have uh, special guests, uh, two very special guests from Red Cross. We've got Lena Aranis. Uh, she is the volunteer recruiting specialist. And we've got Chandler Morgan. He's our uh, regional program manager. Hello, guys. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. Really well, thank you so much for having us. I'm That's, glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you guys here. Uh, we've got we've seen the devastation from uh, in North Carolina and Florida, and uh, even the surrounding uh, states. There are, but the main the main points are uh, Asheville and um, the Sewanee uh, Sewanee uh, area and uh, Florida down there, uh, Clearwater, I believe, and um, just all the way through. I can't believe this. It's it's horrible. Uh, and as everyone knows in Louisiana, we, we, we've got our fair share. And um, the help that we get from everybody is uh, extremely. We help those that help themselves. And, and uh, as Americans, we help. We enjoy, well, not enjoy, but we are there to help. And uh, we appreciate all of your effort. So um, let's get to it. We, we need volunteers to help with the uh, recovery efforts and the relief efforts. Uh, so what kind, what's going on with this program? Why don't you explain it to me a little bit? Well, um, so as far as um, we're sort of in a matrix of a lot of different organizations that are trying to do a lot of different things. Um, so what we do in particular, what the Red Cross focuses on is primarily mass care and sheltering after an emergencies. Um, so we usually work um, to staff shelters. Um, a lot of them are for people who are leaving an area who don't have a place to stay. Um, we have about 2,100 volunteers on the ground right now, and we provide or focus on providing people with a, a, a safe place to stay, food to eat, and then access to healthcare resources also. Um, and usually when uh, we respond, we partner with a bunch of different organizations. So um, like here, for example, we partner with organizations like the Catholic Charities, Southern Baptist uh, Kitchen is, a, is another good one. Um, and they'll do things like cook meals, which then we can go out and provide to the community. Um, so I think that's something that this particular um, emergency has really brought to light is the power of partnership um, and, and sort of like how we fit into the larger operation. There's other organizations like, um, I've seen some people mention like Samaritan's Purse that sets up like mobile field hospitals and stuff like that. So trying to work with different organizations to figure out what is everybody bringing to the table and then how we can best leverage all of our resources to, to work together. So the um, uh, up in Asheville, most of the roads are inaccessible. Um, how close are you setting up and uh, what opportunities are you providing up there? So we have a number of shelters that are open in Asheville um, and in um, the communities themselves. And that's really the main focus that we're providing at the moment is with sheltering. Um, so we work with the, the cities and the local governments um, and they provide us with a list of facilities that they have that basically we can have volunteers go to. Um, and we set up cots and we provide meals uh, basically for people who don't have a roof over their head so they have a safe place to stay. Um, and then we invite in other organizations and resources to go in and, and talk to 
um, the clients at the shelter about their next steps um, and sort of just go from there. If you want to add on anything to that. Yeah, as of right now, we have about 3,900 people within our shelters. So it's a great way to bring comfort to community and to let us know, hey, we are here to hold your hand and we mm-hmm. help you get through this disaster. Because a lot of them, um, unfortunately, did not realize they had to evacuate, right? Like mm-hmm. the storms with hurricanes, the storms changed completely, like within the second. So we just wanna make sure that people know that we're here to take care of the community and to help them through. Now, uh, the volunteers that we're getting from here that are gonna go up there, um, are they staying in the same shelters or are they being put up in someplace else? I saw that uh, in Florida, one of the places that was supposed to be meant for uh, the evacuees uh, got torn apart. So, I mean, that I'm sure places are pretty, pretty dire right now. Yep, and that is a great example. Um, Usually we have our volunteers will stay in staff shelters. So we have shelters that are just for volunteers to rest and recuperate um, that are separate from where they will be serving the the clients at. Um, And it's um, also uh, in Louisiana, we do um, a very similar similar um, things. I I don't know if anybody remembers back in Hurricane Ida, but we had in the local area, we had the Rapids Parish Coliseum that we helped with. And we also have the Alexandria State Mega Shelter, um, which we usually work on. Um, So yeah, it's to... uh, it's crazy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's there's enough room for everybody, right? Yes. I mean, that we're not crowding out anybody or, or... No, so our main priority is also the people who are asking to deploy to the assessors is like their main safety, right? Mm-hmm. So be, for example, like people who are deploying to Hurricane Helene and, Hur- and Hurricane Milton, like who were there pre-land for, they make, we make sure to know saying, hey, by the way, there's gonna be some hardships once you get to the ground. You're gonna see people who are about to suffer from an assessor or suffering from the, from the previous hurricane. Um, you may not have power. You may, there's gonna be conditions. So people already know what the expectation is gonna be once they get to the ground, but we make sure that they're gonna be comfortable with there's in a staff shelter or whether in a hotel. And that the most important thing is that they're going to be safe. Yeah, the it's just, it's, <sighs> horrible um it's worse i can't even imagine it entire homes and families have been destroyed and uh and we're down here just offering to come up and help in any way i believe is every little bit helps Mm -hmm. Uh, i've gone through these emergencies before Um, the national guard with louisiana uh, serves during uh, emergencies in our state and others in other areas and so i've seen both sides of how this can affect somebody and um, yes the volunteers really do make a difference and i just can't find enough words for uh the word for those that are giving of themselves to to come and help um now for the people that we're going to be helping or the volunteers that go um what exactly are your main mission uh points to do when we get up there and and to start helping out so the most important thing is we make sure before people deploy they have training um so we provide a full um sheltering boot camp training to people before they deploy um and that covers everything like how to set up a shelter um, everything from the distance that you're supposed to put between the cots to where do you put the registration center at. Um, we give training like uh, food safety handling training if they're gonna be serving food. Um, so that's our main priority is making sure that the people who are deployed are gonna be prepared. Um, and typically when we deploy people, we have um, like a, a headquarters type, a Red Cross headquarters, and they'll basically go into that after they fly in Um, get their job assignments, they'll work with them on lodging, transportation, um, and then they'll provide them with like a situational briefing of the situation on the ground and how that uh, sort of fits into the larger picture. Now, are there, are you also, I know that you don't need any experience Mm -hmm. or anything to help. Are you looking for any specialized experience or is that being taken care of by another uh, organization? So I think that's one of the great things about the Red Cross is the possibilities are endless. So whether you have experience or not, we always want you to volunteer and we always find that opportunity the way you want to help the community. 
right now, yes, our biggest concern is, is mask air and sheltering because there were people affected by the storm. But if somebody says, hey, um, I want to do a different side of, I want to be able to help an assessor, but I want to have a different role. We always try to find what makes people comfortable as well, because we are asking them to deploy for two weeks, be away from the family. So we want to make sure that they're going to be happy and comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, honestly, I think, um, I think where some people that, um, might, you might not think of the, that side of it, but I think some counselors, Mm -hmm. um, mental health. Uh, I mean, this is traumatic events. Get some of those people up there to help, you know, talk to people and and help them through it. I mean, it's difficult, but still. And that is going to be one mm -hmm. of the largest needs going ahead as people start to transition out of the shelters is we have a shelter uh, recovery team or an SRT team. And a lot of these are um, like licensed uh, healthcare professionals who will just go in and talk with the clients, um, not just with Hurricane, um, with the larger disasters like Hurricane Helene and Milton, but every single day, even locally, when somebody has a home fire um, that results in residential displacement, we actually go out in the local community and respond to those in Vernon Parish um, and throughout the surrounding communities. So even if it's not just um, a larger response, we always uh, need help. And part of that is recovery. Um, so after we respond to the incident, um, we do have a, a casework team that follows up with people and links in with um, the United Way and 211 and provides those referrals to other organizations locally, um, you know, like Catholic Charity, Salvation Army, who are also doing good work. Um, and we'll basically talk with them about, hey, here's what you can get elsewhere as well. Now for, for this uh, volunteer effort going on right now, how do people, um how do people go about getting in contact with you and, and trying to um, volunteer? So people can go into redcross.org slash Louisiana, and then they'll be able to log in and create their volunteer connection account. Once they get to the system, they just gotta let um, whoever's doing their um, interview, they're saying, hey, I wanna be a disaster responder, and they'll put them in contact with the right person so that we could get them started with it. Or is it, whether it was their shelter training or if they want to help if they're a counselor, if they want to help with the disaster mental health side, we make sure to check the licenses, make sure they're ready to go for that deployment. Yep. And that was also something uh, we were at the installation services fair recently and talking to people who are interested in volunteering there. Um, and that's something that I heard was people were like, hey, you know, I would love to help out, but I'm not really available right now. Um, so you could always sign up to volunteer, take all the trainings um, and then just receive the uh, position that says that you have the trainings and then be put on a standby status. So when you sign up to volunteer in your volunteer connection account, there's actually a section where you can click on disaster responder availability and you can say, um, say between now and December, I'm not willing to deploy um, because of X, Y, Z reason. And then you can even go in there and specify, like I would be willing to help out, you know, just locally, just within the state, I would be willing to deploy nationally. So you could always sign up to volunteer take the trainings um, and then just put in there um, if you aren't willing to deploy. Um, but it's always good for us to just have extra people trained on hand. Um, yeah, kind of like having a, a bank of uh, no, yes. a safety like, bank. Yes, and on that note, we also provide sheltering training to a lot of churches, like local churches. Um, and we actually provide them with saying like, hey, here's how we as the Red Cross run a shelter. So if you want to run a shelter, we will go in and train them on how to actually do it. Um, so that's also something that, that we do. So the, um, so there's going to be, where are, where are the uh, people in uh, North Carolina? Are they, uh, have they been moved out of the area completely or evacuated? I mean, some people, are they still stranded? Uh, is, is everything accessible yet? So as far as we know right now, everybody who, where, the Red Cross is running our shelters, like in South Carolina and North Carolina, Tennessee and Florida as well. So everybody who's in our shelters, that's what we be accounted for. Um, we are also passing out supplies to the community as well, like through our distrib distribution um, supplies, which is like cleaning kits. We also provide water and different resources to the community. Now the, uh, now Florida is, it's a different hurricane, mm -hmm. but I mean, it just seems to be a different emergency altogether. They've got they've got the wind damage and the um, and the flooding, whereas the mudslides and and 
wiped away homes and everything up in North Carolina. Are there different needs uh, at the different uh, in the different states that you're needing that that need to be filled yet, or is that um, or is it pretty much you've got a pool of these are what we need, and then you just and then we go okay here we go we will we'll be sending you off. Yes, and uh, that's part of the preparation that we do. So um, before disasters happen, we have regular contact with local emergency managers. Um, in the state of Louisiana, we work with GOSEP a lot, and we try to pre-plan if this situation happens, which uh, facilities meet the criteria for us to open shelters, and we will go in and do a facilities inspection to say, like, can the wind uh, or can the roof tolerate X number or of like wind speed? And basically we map out beforehand exactly which locations we would use with the state. Um, and then before it happens, um, like before Milton, we pre-positioned about, what was it, Leah, like? Like more than like a thousand volunteers. More than a thousand, like yep. and Wow. We actually get um, uh, shelter trailers mm -hmm. and we'll go to all those sites that we've identified beforehand and we'll have sure, volunteers help um, set up cots and we'll have uh, things pre-staged. So that's part of our um, time frame. is we have um, like leading up to it, the second that we see that it's in the Gulf, we'll send out internally um, messaging and we'll start doing call downs to mobilize volunteers. And that's our metric of success is doing everything that we can to prepare it beforehand. Um, so I think uh, Milton was a great mm -hmm. example where a lot of the sheltering push that we did in Louisiana was to get people there beforehand and make sure that we had everything that we needed. Um, so that way when it did happen, we weren't after the fact trying to fly people in and the airport might be closed or um, you know, driving people into the States and all the hotels are booked and all that other stuff. Um, so that's part of the preparation process, which usually is the most, almost sometimes more time consuming than the response itself. Yeah. So do we have enough shelters for everybody so far? Or are we having any problems? Uh, what what problems and difficulties are we encountering right now? Um, if you yeah, so the city is the one who tells us how many shelters it needs. Like for example, like in Florida, each county will come up to say, hey, by the way, this is what are the needs at? This is how many people have been affected. Um, we notice that um, a lot of the times, like the shelter is going to be open and people are welcome to come either to charge their phones or grab a meal or make sure that like for example a lot of them just have it as a meeting point to meet with their families so um it just depends what the avail the need is for the communities how long the shelter is open for um, but we know with this assessor response it's actually going to be a couple weeks or even months like for us to be able to support the community and make sure that they're able to stand on their feet yeah the uh, um and everything right now, well, other than the uh, intermediate um, dangers that are just out there after the fact, but we're not expecting more to happen while we're volunteering or, are, I mean, somebody's watching the weather <laughs> and uh, making sure that what happens if something else comes up, uh, there's, I'm sure you guys have contingencies for everything, right? Yep, and we do. I think we saw it with um, Laura and mm -hmm. Delta also, is usually they'll loop that into the DR and the existing structure. Um, but that is, um, one thing is it's nice when we have everything set up and everything's running, because then if we do need to expand it, we already have people on the ground. We already have, um, we follow like a pretty similar structure to ICS, mm -hmm. like an okay. incident command structure. Like we'll have a, um, a director who's like a job director over it, and then we'll have different sections, like a, a mass care lead who's in, who's um, over all the volunteers that are gonna be in shelters. We'll have like a feeding lead who's talking with all of our partners, like, you know, um, Southern Baptists and everybody else and trying to figure out how we can work together to get the food to where we need to. Um, so that's all part of the planning. And, and yeah, usually we would just loop that into the uh, structure. A lot of times, like for example, it happened with Hurricane Francine that Helene was coming right and we didn't know where the storm was going to head. So we were doing this disaster response here in Louisiana and down in Baton Rouge for Hurricane Francine. Since we knew there was a possibility that the storm was actually going to come here to Louisiana, then you start having those conversations with people saying, hey, we might have another hurricane coming. Would you be able to extend mm -hmm. your deployment so that we like at least we could get what we need to on the ground and then just get more people through so that we like we're cycling people and make sure we're also not. Mm -hmm. Yes, right and down. also to touch on what Lena said, that's something that we always try to emphasize is we are over 90% mm -hmm. volunteer and the people that um, utilize the sheltering service is know this very well. Most of the people, the people you see who are wearing the Red Cross vest who are on the ground, these are people who have um, in some cases taken two weeks off of work, who are 
um, public school teachers and have jobs that they've taken off and are there giving their time to help people. Um, so we're not um, we're not a federal agency. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit. Um, we don't receive federal yeah. funds, so we're 100 percent reliant on donations and, and people helping out. But it is something that um, we do try to do a push whenever there's a huge emergency because we do rely almost entirely on volunteers who you know want to help people and who are willing to take time off to go to these locations and, and help people out who are in need. So. Now, the, the, the uh, volunteers and your organization, um, are you working hand in hand in conjunction with other organizations such as the National Guard and um, Life uh, or any other yeah. organizations? Oh, you can, yeah, <laughs> so uh, the Red Cross is also like, whenever that disaster happens, we're also part of the EOC. So when those organizations like FEMA and different things, I could say, hey, by the way, Red Cross, can, what can you do for us? What can you help us out of this disaster? So we try to work hand in hand with everybody to make sure that we're delivering the needs because sometimes like we're only able to provide, if we do get financial assistance, it's not gonna be like for the long term, right? We try to do immediate assistance that's gonna help you getting your two feet. So we try to refer you to different organizations who are gonna help you with that long-term recovery. Gotcha. And we do, um, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, the, yes. this is a very, uh, normally I'm a little more jovial yeah. or a little more fun and, and lighthearted, but this, this is just, this is actually dear to my heart. Uh, I've spent the last 20 years dealing with, with emergencies and uh, recoveries and and shelter work and and stuff like that between myself having to go through it and uh and the national guard have, having to help and it really makes a difference uh and to see the volunteers out there is and how grateful we as the people needing the help is are it i never realized how much we appreciate all of you and all of the volunteers out there until I was in or until I was the one in need and uh, they really came through and it really helps. So, I mean, we understand, we, under <laughs> we understand that uh, this can be a tongue tying kind of a conversation to have and it's an, immor an important thing to do and we need as much help as possible uh, and yeah, especially from neighboring states and, and things like that. So uh, if you can, uh, it was redcross.org. Slash Louisiana. And I think, slash Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> and I give a lot of grace to volunteers and also people that I work for the volunteers because they're the ones who are give, raising their hands whenever something bad happens, right? Like Florida is home to me. So seeing that a lot of people are able to raise their hands and say help people from my community, that's very impressive because it's coming out of the goodness of your heart to say, hey, I want to be able to hold somebody's hand in a shelter and say, it's going to be okay. I want to be able to walk around communities and say, hey, these people are going to need the financial assistance. How can we help them? How can we move them forward? Or even with the Sacramento Health, like it's a free service. It's up to eight visits that people get for free. And it's like a licensed counselor just raising their hand and says, I want to make a difference in the community. I want to be able to improve the community mental health after the disaster happened. And same thing with the spiritual care. Like people are able to come to our cross and say, hey, this is something I've never believed in, but I saw that you guys offer spiritual care and it's a free service that we provide and we make sure to put you in contact with the right person so you receive those resources. Yeah, the old, uh, the old saying is uh, there are no atheists in a foxhole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's great to see the community helping community, like it's neighbors helping neighbors and we don't see it as Louisiana or Florida or North Carolina or South Carolina or Tennessee. We see it as like we're all big part of family of the South and we're just here to help one another. Yeah, we are. We do help each other, and mm -hmm. uh, and the food. And if we're getting people from Louisiana going up there to to serve food and stuff, or at least to make the food, they're gonna have some. <laughs> they're gonna have some good food out there. <laughs> that's for sure. Or over in Florida. <laughs> so there was a uh, so. Overall, you've got volunteers that are um, needed. Um, are we taking donations? Uh, do we? Do, do you have any um, needs for donations or anything like that? Or is it strictly the volunteers at this point? So we are, so um, just to separate on the, um, we have 
a couple of different programs we do. So we actually provide services to the military, which is mm -hmm. like at Fort Johnson, for example, we had the summer youth program recently at BJAC. Um, and we also help people with um, the Red Cross messages with their emergency leave. Um, but we also on the disaster side, it is 100%. Um, we're not a federal agency, yes. we rely 100% on donations. And if you go to redcross.org slash donate, you can actually specify on there exactly how you would like the money to be spent, whether you want it to be sent to your local chapter, uh, national responses or um, whatever. So there's a whole um, section on there. Yeah, because the donors money is what also help us respond to disasters, is what help us take care of our volunteers while they're deployed. It is also what help us respond to those natural disasters and making sure that people who are affected by the disaster, they receive either the food that they need or the water that they need. And also we make sure that they receive the financial assistance when, once we go through that process, so. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing the, the things that you take for granted until it's not there anymore, like water. Yeah. <laughs> It's like my, my stepson, he keeps, he wants to drink all the bottled water. And it's like, you, you do realize that comes out the wall, right? <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the, the water and blankets, and uh, I don't even know what the temperatures are like up in the mountains of uh, North Carolina, uh, but I'm sure blankets aren't, are more needed up there than they are in Florida. <laughs> So, but anyway, I appreciate all the, the information that you're coming in and I hope, uh, people out there are willing to volunteer and, and go to redcross.org slash Louisiana to sign up. Uh, we'll put some links in the description and, um, is there anything else that, um, that you can think of that? Um, that's it. And I would just encourage people, you know, even if you don't have the availability or you're not sure, you could always just sign up to volunteer and take the trainings. You could sign up to volunteer and on um, our website um, after you're registered, you can see all the things that we have going on in Louisiana in particular. And then if one of the events interests you, you can just sign up. Um, if not, you mm -hmm. could always just take the training and just be on standby and update your profile. So then, like Chandler said, like our possibilities are always endless when it comes to the American Red Cross. So we will help you find our position. We don't like saying no to people. And when you could, the great thing about our volunteers is like you give us whatever time you want to give us. So if you're only able to donate one hour a day, we will gratefully take that because it's helping the community move forward. Absolutely. Well, Lena Chandler, I appreciate you guys coming in from the Red Cross and I hope everyone out there uh, takes a chance to to do their part, uh, do it a little bit. Every little bit helps. But uh, I appreciate you guys coming in and uh, hopefully we'll have you back someday when it's on a, a, a lighter note. <laughs> but anyways, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office. Please leave a comment, leave a like, uh, subscribe, hit that notification button, and also be sure to go to red dot, or redcross.org slash Louisiana and volunteer if you can, or at least uh, look for something to donate. And uh, it, let's, help make, let's help make America, uh, you know, help stand by and, and help each other out. <laughs> But in the meantime, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and I'll be listening and watching at you later. That was easy.